As you will see, here are the steps that you have to go through to put together a project schedule. Step one is, uh, you know, naming it, putting a start date to it. So file naming is very important. Uh, there's a standard SOP for that, standard operating procedure. Um, you see if we're doing a preliminary schedule or, or a baseline schedule, an approved baseline schedule, they have not only the schedule name, but the date associated with it and that's important because you know things change and as things change we don't want to overwrite something uh, that we you know from a previous version so that kind of helps keep everything straight uh, next thing is we want to set up the defaults um, for Microsoft Project they have an auto schedule function um, these are different options that you can choose uh, to kind of set up, uh, you know, different options I'll go through in the series of videos. We're going to uh, go through each of these individual steps by itself. Ne next, we're going to have five calendars built, uh, seven day, five day, uh, or four day, or five day with holiday. Uh, same thing with weather, asphalt, different calendars. Set up a work breakdown structure, which is just the outline itself. Uh, next thing is to define the activities. That's where we actually identify probably the most difficult step where we identify all the individual tasks that go into making up a schedule and then assigning those characteristics to them, uh, which is the next step. Uh, where we add durations on step six, add predecessor logic, what happens before, add successor logic, what happens after. And then, of course, we correct all the calendars assigned to every individual activity, putting the correct calendar assigned to the activity. We compress the schedule into the time frame we have. You'll see that, you know, normally when we do a schedule, it exceeds the period of time allotted for it. So we need to compress it, and we'll go through how to do that. We'll add resources into the schedule, and, the, and then what we're going to focus on is not, you know, like a human resource. We're going to focus on a cost resource, how to load them into the schedule, how to do it accurately. Um, then tw step 12 will be reduce an excess float in case there is, you know, something uh, missing a, a successor or missing an activity, we'll look at that. We'll remove any redundancies that we may have. Uh, we'll compress the schedule again after we do that, uh, making sure we get rid of any negative float that exists. Uh, we do a final review of the spec if one exists. Um, even if one doesn't exist, we go through a standard specification to keep everybody on the same page. Do a final review going uh, from the early start of the first activity down to the early finish of the last activity. Then we establish a baseline by setting the baseline. We create a narrative associated with that baseline. And we, you know, we then we create a, a report we can use, a narrative we can use as we do schedule updates. And then we can review a, a schedule log, um, which, you know, goes through and shows us any uh, problems that we have with the schedule. Um, you know, we go through and review a standard itemized list. Do we have the right IDs uh, listed, uh, the descriptions, uh, uh, you know, as our consistency in descriptions, those type of things. And the last but not least, We'll run the reports, different reports that are important, and kind of walk through that. So these are the steps that we're going to go through in a series of videos. Uh, there'll be a, ser a series of 20 different videos, all less than, you know, uh, 10 or 15 minutes. That kind of briefly touches on each individual section. Uh, make it easy to be able to navigate through and help you put together a schedule.